Okay, so these are three different type of inter-VLAN communication implementation. Now let's talk about the uh, layer three communication process. So here, let's assume uh, such a um, network topology. So still we have two different VLANs connected with a switch. And then the switch one is connected to an aggregation switch and then to a router. And within this router, they can provide the network address translation function to translate the interior IP to outgoing internet public IP. Okay. And finally, through this router, they are connected to the uh, internet. And uh, there is a server connected, also connected to the internet. And uh, there is a packet from PC1, uh, which want to communicate with the server. So let's describe the communication process from PC1 in VLAN 10 to the server 2.3.4.5 in the internet. This is the physical network topology of this network. Uh, if we look at the logical connection, actually you can see that within this access switch, actually they have two different VLANs. And uh, this interface belongs to VLAN 10. This interface belongs to VLAN 20. It also has a trunk interface, uh, which can transmit packets from both uh, VLANs. And then let's look at the logical connection of this uh, aggregation switch. Actually, this aggregation switch is a layer three switch. They include two um, modules. So for the switching module, they have one interface connected with the switch one. So this interface actually should be in the trunk type to support the traffic from both VLANs. And another interface is connected with the router. So if we configure this traffic as the VLAN 30, actually this should be an access port with VLAN 30 and communicate with the router. And above on the routing module, because here they should support three different VLANs. So in the routing module, they should have three different VLAN interface to match each of the VLANs. And then default route on this switch two actually should be uh, set to as this router to let all the traffic from this PCs to going out to the internet. This is the logical uh, module of switch two. And then let's look at the router. So here, the router actually first should be configured the static routes. They need to, the router need to know uh, for the VLAN 10, they should forward through this switch two. And for VLAN 20, they should also switch using this VLAN, using this switch two. So they need to configure the VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 as the static routes, okay? And then this router also have this NAT function. So NAT means network address translation. Actually, this technique is used to solve the shortage of IP address problem. So actually now you know that the IPv4 address has already been used, used out. So there is no new IPv4 address can be allocated all over the world. So people think of that uh, maybe multiple hosts in the internet can share one public IP address. And uh, they use a NAT a router with the NAT technology to implement this. So all the packets, when they go out, the outer internet will think of this package from one same IP address. Okay, so actually to enable the internet PC using the private IP address to access the internet, this router's NAT can function as the configuration and the translation of this communication we configure the network address and port translation on the router one. Okay. This is the logical connection. Now let's look at how a packet is forwarded until arrive the server. 